In the late Bronze Age, naval combat emerged as a pivotal aspect of warfare in the Mediterranean. Today, we delve into the world of late Bronze Age naval battles, exploring the technological innovations, tactics and the dramatic clashes that shaped this era. At the dawn of the late Bronze Age, the trade routes in the Eastern Mediterranean reigned supreme. Merchants are the bringers of riches, the enablers of the massive militaries of the established powers. But year after year their position is threatened, marauders slowly appear in the horizon, threatening these trade routes. At first, the incidents were limited and the traders took it into their own hands to protect themselves by hiring warriors and protecting their ships with sturdy armor. However, with time, it became apparent that the marauding sea peoples were not about to stop as the frequency and brutality of attacks increased. The pirates grew bolder, going as far as raiding unprotected coastal settlements. It was time for a proper response. The Late Bronze Age witnessed a strategic shift in ship architecture with the introduction of the Helladic Horde Galley. This vessel became the foundation for future advancements in naval warfare, but it was the development of the broiled rig that truly revolutionized Mediterranean seafaring. This innovation provided greater maneuverability and the ability to sail closer to the wind. The manipulation of the sail through brails and the removal of the boom allowed warriors to move freely during ship-to-ship -ship combat. The Helladic Ord Galley transformed into an ideal vessel for rapid travel, lightning-fast raids on coastal settlements and open sea battles. One significant depiction of the late Bronze Age naval battles comes from the Bedinet Habu reliefs. Carved around 1171 BC, these monumental reliefs offer insights to the cutting-edge maritime technologies of the time. And interestingly, both the Sea Peoples and the Egyptian vessels showcased identical features, indicating a fusion of new elements with traditional Egyptian ship designs. This hybrid form of warship represented a formidable force on the open seas. To understand the origins of these technological advancements, we must look back to an earlier event, a naval combat against seaborne Sheridan warriors. The encounter with the Sheridan forced the Egyptians to invent a new term for warship, suggesting a lack of prior experience with their vessels. It's possible that the Sheridan possessed the broiled rig and other effective technologies, which the Egyptians appropriated to integrate into their own naval forces. So, how were these early naval battles conducted? In what tactics are concerned, a naval battle would have played out very much like a land engagement. Surprisingly, the use of ramming, well known in later classical naval battles, was not yet evident during this period. Instead, naval battles relied on standoff weaponry like arrows, slings and thrown spears. And, as the ships drew closer, warriors employed close combat techniques and engaged in boarding actions. The techniques of fighting on the sea were quite similar to land battles, with infantry fighting as infantry, all bait on a moving platform surrounded by the unpredictable sea. The fleets likely formed formations to maximize their effectiveness. These formations could include lines, wedges or other tactical arrangements. Communication between ships was crucial for effective coordination. Visual signals, such as flags or banners, were likely used to relay commands and maintain cohesion. In some cases, communication might have been facilitated by sound signals such as horns or drums. The Egyptians displayed great ingenuity by also employing the grapnel, a device used to capsize enemy vessels. By catching the enemy ship and swiftly rowing backwards, ship-based soldiers could defeat their opponents without needing to engage in close combat. Now, let's explore the scale of these early naval battles. While visual evidence is limited, we can infer the participation of warriors and ships based on available data. During the Late Bronze Age, we find evidence of Pentecontors, galleys rowed by 50 men, appearing in the Aegean. These vessels allowed for swift and agile movement on the water and would have been the type of ships Odysseus and his men traveled the Aegean in, an ancient predecessor of the classical triremes. Tablets from Pylos mention crews of approximately 600 oarsmen, suggesting the potential for raiding parties consisting of small fleets. The danger these small fleets posed to coastal settlements was evident. Historical texts from the late 13th and early 12th centuries mention enemy fleets ranging from 7 to 20 ships, causing panic among the inhabitants of targeted coastal areas. 
These fleets, composed of triaconters and pentaconters, could have contained a significant number of rowers, enough to wreak havoc on unprepared or lightly defended coastal settlements. With these historical accounts and the emerging evidence of naval technology and fleet sizes, we begin to understand the significance of these early naval battles and their role in shaping the future of warfare. The Late Bronze Age witnessed a transformation in naval warfare driven by technological innovations and strategic adaptations. The Helladic Ord Galley and the revolutionary Brailed Rig, for instance. The Late Bronze Age witnessed the birth of the first navies and ships able to carry hundreds of men sent to the seas to protect their homelands. It witnessed the first real large-scale naval engagements. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I have been Wolf, stay wonderful, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.